let's find the, the best we can see out there right now, which is Clean Green. And they do certify off of USDA standards for agriculture. And we went ahead and we went through the application process. We had the site visits. We ran the tests to make sure they test in different phases of growth to make sure you're not using things you're not supposed to be using. Um, and we went ahead and we got that certification. All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Cannabis Corona Report, where we speak to cannabis companies that are succeeding during the global pandemic. And today, we are joined by Amy Anderley from Legal. Amy, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Legal opened its doors over a decade ago and is the only clean, green, certified organic cultivator in Denver. I want to jump right in. What do you need to do to be a Clean, green, certified organic cultivator. Okay, I'm going to drag out my answer because there's a lot to get there. Okay. So um, when we opened our doors in 2010, this was like the dawn of the cannabis era in our nation, right? We were early adopters here in Colorado. And so, um, we knew that we wanted to do something a little bit different and, and follow sort of our niche of how we live, which is organic and sustainable, Right. But um, with cannabis, I think there's an, one, there's an assumption that it is organic just because it's a plant, right? And sustainability wasn't something that was talked about too much in 2010, 11. It was just starting. So early on, we, we knew that, you know, if, if there was going to be a differentiator, this was going to be it because we're a little mom and pop shop. And eventually we figured the consumers would sort of follow suit like they have with every other product on the market. Right. So um, we wanted to sort of integrate organic growing practices in our indoor facility, which was tough, of course, but we started working with um, not a basement grower. Very early on, we got rid of the whole master grower idea. We hired a gentleman that was working from uh, for Whole Foods at the time, growing tomatoes organically. And he was from Texas A&M. He had a background. So he came to legal, learned how to grow cannabis. There is a small learning curve, but it's a, teaching a scientist one plant rather than teaching someone everything about that. So, and, and the tomato very much mimics cannabis in terms of strains and how they grow, et cetera. So he integrated for us initially a lot of um, sort of organic best practices from um, how we were growing, what nutrients we were using at the time we were mixing our own, how we were doing integrated pest management, et cetera. And so that was early on. And, and he then had someone else come up under him that came from a raw organic dairy farm. So knew a lot about compliance and organic as well. And for years, we sort of touted the horn of, of, we are clean cannabis, we are organic, we are sustainable. We were integrating sustainability measures as well. But like anything out there, um, you shouldn't trust what I say. Just because I say, oh, this is grown organically because our grower said it's grown organically. Like there really needs to be uh, trust but verify, a third party certifier. So we took a look at the market to see what was going on. And, and at the same time, we're getting these certifications um, I had started a group that's now called the Cannabis Certification Council with some other colleagues of ours, um, which is a, a nonprofit that we can go into more about this. But um, we knew that we had to look at the certifications that existed so that our clients knew that what we said we did, we actually did. So first we went to the city of Denver locally. And they had a sustainability certification for businesses. And we were super excited that they would verify a cannabis business, you know, treat us like any other business, right? Restaurant, uh, dry cleaner, you know, the gas station, you know, retail outlet. So we went through that process with them and we were certified on our sustainable business practices. So we were like, great. So we got that covered, but we still need to tackle this organic side. And organic certification in cannabis is a real challenge, which is why we started this nonprofit, because there is no 
true cannabis certification. They're using USDA standards against cannabis for indoor, outdoor, hydroponic. There are so many different variations. But we thought, well, let's find the, the best we can see out there right now, which is clean green. And they do certify off of USDA standards for agriculture. And we went ahead and we went through the application process. We had the site visits. We ran the tests to make sure they test in different phases of growth to make sure you're not using things you're not supposed to be using. Um, And we went ahead and we got that certification. So for us, we feel like while it maybe isn't the, the absolute pinnacle of the best, because I think that's for your listeners, there are so many growers out there that tell you, well, we don't have a certification because it really doesn't match up to cannabis, but it's also an excuse not to get the best thing that is available to them at that time, right? So we went ahead and got Clean Green and we're um, proud to have that now. This We're working on a third year running. Um, we've had two years certified and completed. And what that says is that, you know, the nutrients that we use, the pesticides that we use, the integrated pest management, um, everything as part of the process meets that organic criteria for USDA standards. And um, I know this is such a long answer, but it's really interesting because um, why that is a problem is that USDA standards, like I don't smoke my strawberries, right? And I don't turn my green beans into topicals or so because cannabis has so many unique ways of being ingested, um, you know, eaten topically, uh, extracted, et cetera. It's, it's really challenging to find where that organic standard is met in every aspect of cannabis um, and in every like iteration of what that cannabis ends up looking like. So we could have organic cannabis, but what if the edible products aren't? Or what if the vape products aren't? And so for us, we really specialize in flour. And we're trying to bring people back to, there's a lot of fancy ways to do it, but boy, there's really nothing just like smoking the flour, you know, and, and or, you know, vaporizing the flour, using something as close to natural as you possibly can. So I know that's a long answer, but... No, no, that's what people need to hear because it's not a simple soundbite that sets Mm -hmm. you apart. Being clean, green, organic certified is who you are. The other thing that I don't think people appreciate is that you're not just a cultivator. You're also a manufacturer and you own your own dispensary. So you're 100% vertically integrated organization, which really makes being clean, green, organic certified even more impressive. You're kind of a niche all to yourself, like a craft brewery where people are seeking you out because of your uniqueness. What's next? What's next for you guys? Um, You know, I think that we're... John, my husband and I, we're, we have thought a few years ago, like, oh, we're going to expand and we want to do this and we want to do that. What we realize is we can't do everything at the same time. We can do one thing really well. And I think that, you know, maybe that is for some people that doesn't work. For big business, we, we don't have investors. It's just us. We're able to make choices as a small business um, that others might not might think is crazy, like growing organically is <laughs> very expensive. Um, and, and so I think for right now, we just want to keep doing what we're doing and do it right. Maintain our reputation because being able to say since 2010, that's a pretty lofty, you know, sort of, um, I don't know, prop for us. Like for, we, we take a lot of pride in that. Um, and then I think for myself, and even how it relates to legal. I mentioned to you that I was on the board of the Cannabis Certification Council, and we put on the Sustainability Symposium here in Denver. Um, It's been now, we're working on our fifth year, and we've gotten a a ton of traction on sustainability through that work group. And we're doing, um, you know, online programming, and and there's a lot around that. And so I take a lot of pride in, in that as sort of my pet project too. But the other mission of the Cannabis Certification Council is to develop 
a true cannabis organic certification. Right now, the draft is written for that, where it, um, you know, we worked with standard writers to create a certification that is not taken or lifted from anything else and overlaid on cannabis, but that is specifically for cannabis. Um, so I, I want to push for that to come out. But then the other sort of the, the triangle that connects that with this organization is education. We need to improve cannabis users' education into how they shop for and what they buy in cannabis. And so I work with them on the What's in My Weed campaign, which is just getting getting people to like stop and think like how was this grown what was this grown with why why is this so cheap why is that a, you know we can't differentiate at our store on price right now because people the consumer doesn't recognize that but we can certainly see that there are a lot of others at the very low end um and and that's okay you know if people want to choose conventional for themselves that's fine but i think i want to get people out there that are you know maybe like yourself for me, I, I eat organic food. I work out. I care about what I'm eating. I care about what I'm feeding my daughter and how I'm treating the environment. And consumers can find that in cannabis. But unfortunately, and it's not their fault, we consumers have not had enough time to catch up with this. Like they're, the learning curve for shopping for at a dispensary, we used to just get it from whoever we got it from and they handed us whatever bag they handed us and we were like, thank you, here's our money. Now the consumer drives what's in the shop and I think it's important to teach people that there can be quality. They should know where their product was grown and how it was grown. They should know how it affects them, you know, and you and I had to learn how to shop for meat we had to learn how to buy wine, what kind of alcohol we prefer to drink, um, why we shouldn't buy hormones in our milk, what is cage-free eggs. Like We take for granted that we've learned all this stuff as shoppers, but it, it was taught to us. And so I think through the Cannabis Certification Council, with this, the standard comes an education so that people understand why Legal is doing something different than the big box store version down the road and why there's a choice there. Now, unfortunately, I have to bring this interview to a close, but I have the links to Amy and Legal in the show notes. So if anybody wants to follow up with her and speak more about this, I'm sure she'd be happy to talk to you about this. And I promise to have her back. I have like 10 questions that I didn't get a chance to ask her. I know. I, I would love to keep talking. And I might even suggest putting um, the link for the Cannabis Certification Council in in my contact info as well, because if people are interested and in, we have a happy plant series, which teaches people um, if they're growing on their own, just different techniques that they can use and or how to shop for it. So it's really consumer based. Um, and we also have a symposium that if, if there's people out there that want to get involved, they can because... Oh, yeah. We need we'll, we'll definitely, energy behind this. Oh, yeah. We'll definitely add those to the show notes. But, Amy, thanks again for being on the show. Yeah, thank you. Enjoy your week. 